Living on this Coromandel property meant giving up things like electricity and television. But it didn't bother John and Paula Williams when they applied for a shared job as project managers here. In return, they have a free lifestyle with their son, Solomon, which would be the envy of many. Living the dream, really. A lot of people comment on it. It's just amazing, I mean, to be living on a beach and in this environment, to have this freedom is, yeah, it's incredible. The couple take turns at looking after their son while the other's working. When I was teaching, I was incredibly passionate about it, but I think I burnt myself out. I gave it 10 years, and I think I needed a new challenge and something new to get passionate about, and it works. It's great. Chickens. Been thinking about names for the chooks? Yeah. Little chooks. <laughs> Have you got that's one name? What's another name? They eat from the sea, grow their own vegetables, and have a few hens. Sewing. Whoa, whoa. No, pop it back in there. Little gentle, gentle, gentle. Oh. <laughs> oh, nearly. John came to Waitaia Bay for holidays for many years because the property is owned by his stepfather. He jumped at the chance to leave his job as a landscape gardener to come here full time. We do our own power, we grow our own food and we're out of town and out of the mess, so it's, it's quite different. I wouldn't trade it for anything at all. Have you seen my office? <laughs> she works really hard and it's sort of 80% of the work is, is fundraising to keep the project alive, so Paula's fantastic with that. Hello. Oh, um, it's going really well. We made the pitch. And Where else can I have a view like that when I go to work and I can walk back home for an espresso where my husband's ground the beans and put it on the stove and he just yells out of the bedroom window and I saunter up and look at Solomon surfing. Yeah. And it's pretty idyllic. But the life comes with responsibilities too. Project Kiwi is a charitable trust and so every trustee is a volunteer. So my primary job is to manage the workloads for trustees to make sure no one has burnout because our philosophy is that if we have long-term trustees, we've got a long-term project. John and Paula send Kiwi eggs to Rotorua to be incubated, hatched and reared, ready for release back at Waitaia. She keeps records of Kiwi which are monitored via a transmitter attached to their upper leg. We have their transmitter change date, general health check. We've got patterns of when they incubate their eggs, so we've got a set of expectations on each kiwi. Jono is the boss of field work, and he does all of the kiwi monitoring and the egg lifts and that associated with the kiwi monitoring when they come up for their eggs to be lifted. He does the pest and predator control, like all the ground-based trapping, and he helps coordinate all the volunteer weekends. We try to minimise the little mammals that are running on the ground. Stoats, rats, weasels. A stoat will go into a kiwi's burrow and sit there. They're quite clever little critters and they'll wait until the actual animal's hatched. They haven't got a big enough jaw set to perforate an egg because it's quite a large egg. So what they'll do is they'll sit there and they'll listen and then they'll wait until the kiwi hatches. And then basically all they do is nip the back of the neck out or the front of the throat and then bugger off. So, yeah, they're awful. If there's someone to look after her son, Solomon, Paula loves to work in the forest with John. I'll go and do that and trap up the airstrip, eh? Yep, then I'll go check the kiwi up in the tree. OK. And I'll see you at home. All right. You can't keep her in a cupboard for too long. You've got to let her have some uh, fresh air, so she loves coming out and doing groundwork as well. Paula uses telemetry to monitor a kiwi male who's been incubating for 65 days. She hopes he'll also have a second egg about 30 days old. A female kiwi does nothing once she's laid her eggs, and the father leaves the chicks to fend for themselves as soon as they hatch, making them very vulnerable. As hoped, the male is on the nest. It's almost time for John to remove the eggs to give them a better chance against predators.
An eglift usually means an all-night vigil for John. He must wait for the Kiwi male to leave the nest. Uh, we're here now, the bird's on the nest, and um, basically what we're going to do is just sit and wait and as long as it takes so he hops off, then there's less danger of um, removing eggs with birds in nests. Do you often have to wait until very early in the morning? Absolutely. Some of them don't get off till four in the morning, five in the morning. It's, it's quite incredible. At late stage when the, the, they can hear the bird underneath them hatching, they will wait around and sit on them for long periods of time, yeah. The night's nearly over before the male goes out to feed. Right. I think he's off. Let's go. Here we are. The nest's just here. A reflector on a peg marks the nest in the dark. Yep. He's hopped out. You can see all the uh, foliage has been pushed out there, so it's a good sign he's off his, his nest. He's going to be disappointed, isn't he, John? He will be, yeah, but we'll bring his little babies back in, in a bigger, healthier state. <laughs> all right. Oh, it's nice and warm. Beautiful, big, warm egg. Now, what we're going to do now is we'll candle it and we'll see which way the air cell is sitting. What's the point of marking the air cell? And we have to keep the air cell all the right way up, so when we're travelling with the eggs, we don't affect the, the membrane on the side of the egg. Why is the egg so big? From what I understand, it's the evolution of the bird, so it used to be rather large, sort of around 12 kg, and over the years it got predated, and it was not nocturnal. We just have to be a little bit careful here. And so basically... The bird shrunk and became nocturnal from predation from bigger animals, but the eggs stayed the same size. It's not fair to that poor female <laughs> kiwi, is it? Oh, poor lady. No wonder she doesn't stick around when she's laid them. No, no, it's, I'd be the same. I'd be out of there and leave the hubby to do the, uh, the looking after too. Get you just Unfortunately, to there's only one egg this time. The other may have been infertile. But since the project began, about 100 eggs have been sent away to be transformed into yeah, feisty juveniles. We've done the easy bit, removing the egg. Now it's the tricky bit of getting it to the bike and to Rotorua. So. Right, here we go. Precious cargo. Absolutely. And a youngster called Speedwagon is about to come home. <laughs> 